tonight's at the round table a round table discussion on speculative fiction books and film Hi everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Knights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the 1998 science fiction, space opera, I guess, Lost in Space. I'm sitting at the table with Bill and with Martin, and I'm going to start with general impressions of the film. Bill, you get to go first this yes. time. Well, I think the last thing I said, this was one of my favourites, and it is one of my favourites, because you could just divorce your mind and just have fun. Uh, yeah. And... That's about where we'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Looking one. at Sonia. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm in the camp of It Was Fun. I first saw this movie as a kid. It's about a family lost in space. I was living in the middle of suburbia, going to middle school, as boring as you can get. The idea of a space adventure, hey, that seemed awesome. Uh, it was at a time that Friends was playing on TV, so Matt LeBlanc used to watch that, even though now I kind of cringe at some of the episodes. It was great for a lot of the time. I had a lot of fun watching Lost in Space. I didn't. <laughs> I also watched this uh, movie when I was a kid, and I remember walking out of the, the cinema disappointed in it. Um, and I'm not sure if that sort of holds over to how I feel about it now, because I, I re really remember being super disappointed with the movie. It had a lot of, in my mind then, it had a lot of potential, and then it wasted it on weird things. So, yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's not a terrible movie. It's just not good. <laughs> 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 That's how I feel about it. <laughs> yes. I agree. It's not a, it's not a bad, it's not a great movie, but it's definitely not a bad movie either. It's not down at the bottom. Oh, no, 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 no. no. It's not Battlefield but. Earth. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. science fiction, it, it is not Battlefield Earth. It is also not, yeah, yeah. the greatest sci-fi that's ever been made. But yeah, it, for me, it was fun yeah. to just park in neutral for a little bit, yeah. watch giant spider monsters try to kill the family. <laughs> that was fine. Did any of you pick up what the shell around the space bugs was? No. She said it, and I went, "Ha! Little Wolverine bugs. It's adamantium." Oh, <laughs> I missed it all together. <laughs> yeah, because when she was explaining what the bugs were made out of, and she said um, adamantium exoskeletons or something like no. that, and it, these bugs are definitely made for life in space. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> little Wolverines. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I had been watching Wolverine beforehand, I may have picked up on it. Uh, no, yeah, was... that, that's something that went right over my yeah. head. Oh, I picked it up immediately. The minute she said it, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> But um, I do give the credit to, to the producers and directors on this is that they did sort of take the story that was out in the TV series in the 60s and bring it to a movie uh, fairly credibly. Yeah, no, um, that I have no doubt. Yeah. Um, they did take a few, you know, like back in the 60s, the family life was the 60s family life that yeah. they were trying to portray. It has definitely evolved in the 30 years between the movie and the TV series so they tried to portray that a lot better too yeah. and so forth and I felt that the female characters at least had a little bit more character uh, yes. compared to the TV series in the 60s yeah and I think that we'll yeah. we'll see that again yeah. with the Netflix show that's just come out yeah. uh, you know we'll probably see another 30 year jump forward where it's you know a very different piece as well well, yeah, it's already shaping up to be quite yeah. different. I haven't watched any of the episodes yet, but I am curious because there is a lot of potential in this story here. There is. It's just, I don't know what it is yeah. about this movie that I find so disappointing. I don't know. The writing is meh. Yeah. Most of the acting was meh. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I, uh... There were a couple of characters I really, really enjoyed in this. The character portrayal of Doctor Smith was, I thought, was really well done. Well, yeah. I, you, you, credit where credits due. Yeah. Gary Oldman is it, exactly phenomenal. Yeah. But the, even the interaction between him and the young Will Smith, yeah, yeah. that is that is actually right out of the TV series too, right? Yeah, that manipulative of a young soul. Yeah, <laughs> shall we say? Reminds me of Scar with the Lion King. Yeah. Very yeah. much just... Yes! Yeah, like pushing him in certain directions. Right like, down to the accents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the 
The one character that just drove me, I just could not stand, it was uh, Matt LeBlanc's character. Mm -hmm. He was uh, my favorite. <laughs> yes, but my problem with that him centers surprising. around this thing of the Hollywood having to portray that kind of a character as a rash, impulsive person of a military mind. That's how they portray yeah. the military. And that's, you know, completely against anything. Like, he would have been, he wouldn't even be a major in today's mm -hmm. forces if he did the crap that he was doing. He wouldn't be selected for this high-profile mission. He would have been drummed out of the service. So, as a fan of the B-movie genre, <laughs> I can tell you that virtually every admiral and every military program is crewed by a necessary desire to create monsters <laughs> or something of a, a similar nature. Yeah. And really the only thing that trumps them is a civilian who knows kind of what they're doing. So this is totally believable to me. <laughs> There's This is part of the Earth Mega Piranha program or something. <laughs> just decided to sling them up in space. <laughs> but, the, but like I said, yeah. that's why I didn't like his character. And There's like, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like... Uh, it, you know, you can listen to Chris Hadfield talk about what is necessary for an astronaut, and you know, he says, "Well, he was asked, do you ever have any disagreement with the Russians or the Chinese up on the International Space Station?'" He says, "Very rarely, because the type of people that it takes to do this sort of mission, we're all very like-minded, and we all kind of fit into the same mold. Yeah. Uh, it attracts a certain type, like the idea of having." such a diverse dichotomy of people on a on a spaceship almost wouldn't happen because that's not productive. However, imagine lost in space without conflict, like yeah. slightly misdirected it's, in it's the sort, stars. Yeah, it's <laughs> not good Hollywood it's not good Hollywood business. <laughs> slightly <laughs> misdirected in the stars. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> sorry, that took way too long to hear. <laughs> That's the new title of this yeah. movie, slightly misdirected in the stars. Yeah. We just, yeah, we, we put out a stellar map, we figured out where we were, we reoriented, we went that way, it was I, fine. Yeah. Like, See, <laughs> what bothered me about Matt LeBlanc's character is there was no growth. With no. all of the other characters, there was some sort of growth, with the exception of the mother character, who was just always the mother character, don't get me started. Um, oh no, But for him, Start. he was, no. <laughs> for him, he was, he was a scoundrel at the beginning. Like a womanizing scoundrel, and then at the end, he was a womanizing scoundrel that got what he wanted, and that it bugged me. Right. There was no yeah. character growth whatsoever. Maybe in the second movie that they were planning, maybe no. he had some growth. Probably yeah. not. No. 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 I can't imagine. Actually, yeah, he he was quite poorly written, I think. Yeah. Just on a side fact or a side note, that uh, this movie had a nickname called the Iceberg. Because it sank. No. It sank the ship. No, because when it came out, it took the number one spot from Titanic. Oh. Really? In, yep. In the theater. It sank the Titanic. <laughs> I mean. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought, I, really? Yeah. I would have thought that, but. <laughs> I thought it flopped at the. Uh, on its opening night it, or its yeah. opening weekend. It ah. took first place or it oh. placed top. And then people watched it and were like, nah. Yeah. yeah. It's possible. Quite possible that's what happened. <laughs> well, that's, by that time, James Cameron was already drowning in a bathtub full yeah. of money. So well, yeah. Probably just, yeah. Just, yeah. Fires fires well, at that point, was it Titanic came out, what, in November the previous year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it came out early November and this came out in April. Yeah. And yeah. so the Titanic had been basically a 15 month or 15 week run at number one. Yeah. So. It was well, bound to hit, get hit by something. That, that's it. It just happened to be Mount LeBlanc, which is a disappointing <laughs> iceberg. <laughs> disappointing iceberg. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Matt LeBlanc is effectively playing yeah. Joey in space, right? Like That was it. Yeah. 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 You know what? I think that's probably what bothered me the most. Of, uh, Except uh, yeah, slightly smarter Joey because he's supposed to know military strategy or something. Yeah. You would have thought, but... But, yeah. <laughs> he was still flying by the seat of his pants. Mm. Yeah. I, I, you know, and his joystick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like I say, is having watched this at a, at a different point, like... It, it used to be, you know, the day before we all had personal devices, my family would gather around on a Thursday night and we would watch Friends because that's when its syndicated run was out. We would watch mm -hmm. X-Files. Yeah. Same we thing. would watch X-Files on, I think it was Friday or Sundays or something, and, like, that was the show you watched, and so Joey was now in space, and you're like, okay, it's very easy for me to make that mental hop on over, whereas today, with so much more choice... Yeah. And, and such not better being, writing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and not being forced. It wasn't like... 
the family kind of got together and was like, all right, let's have a vote. Yep, this is what we're watching on our Thursday nights. Uh, and now you can watch anything, so you're like, I don't think this holds up very well. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, but I, it didn't then either for me. I wasn't thrilled yeah. after watching it. Yeah. When I was a kid. I was a young man. I loved the idea of him yeah, going nuts think... on the bugs and just like, defend the line. And he snaps on his super gun. Like, ah! like See, The fact <laughs> that he had time to do that amazed me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's sort of, maybe, maybe that's where my dissatisfaction came from. Because the only character close in age to me at the time of watching it was uh, the younger sister. Right. Uh, Penny. Penny. There we go. Th- thank you. God. She was nothing like me. Yeah. And she was... Almost well, nobody useless. is like you. You're yeah. a unique diamond in the rough. Diamond. I, yeah, in the rough still. I don't know. That's from Aladdin. That's the, <laughs> It's meant it's as a compliment. Don't Aladdin. read too far into this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was useless. And yeah. so I don't think I had anything to attach myself to for the film. And I yeah. just felt maybe left out. Maybe. Maybe that's why I didn't like it. Though I really did like um, the kid. Uh, Will. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I could care less about Will. Really? I liked him because the thing I latched onto was having all of these ideas and not having anybody to listen to them. Yeah. I uh, might have been an opinionated child. Hold on. Yeah. Hold that thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is that a big red button on the table? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Push it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, so, yeah. I wasn't thrilled with the portrayal of the women on this. I mean, at least the elder sister had some brains. Sort of. She still fell for Matt LeBlanc at the end. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, well, they were the only two single people of consenting age. (laughs) <laughs> I remember from the TV series, I remember Judy, she was probably, she wasn't basically an adult yeah. at that point, she was still a teenager, I think, had actually an infatuation with the major uh, yeah. West character. See, that I could get, like the yeah. infatuation thing I could yeah. get. Yeah. But, so, they sort of put the infatuation with the younger sister, actually, yeah, in a way, they, yeah, they did a little bit. <laughs> could it get any cuter? See, this is why I didn't. Yeah. This is why I didn't relate to her, because yeah, that was never in my No, I, I think brain. that this is where I, Hollywood gets into these unnecessary love stories that yeah. don't need yeah. to be in movies or enhance them somehow. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so. yeah no, agreed. Entirely unnecessary. Yeah. So, I, I'm wondering if the 60s sensibilities of the original sort of infected the, the, the writing of this one, because there is a line that made me go, what the f- what? And it's the I can still hear the women scream. And I literally threw my pen down and went what the hell is this? The 1300s? Oh, yeah. Like, what? Mm. <laughs> Why that particular line? It is so bizarre to me. It just stuck out as wrong. And kind of and kind of odd yeah. coming from the Will. Sun. The yeah. sun. Yeah, it's a really yeah. odd statement. Yeah. That struck me too. Like, it, just, it just didn't strike me as a 60s thing. It just sort of it's an odd thing to well, say. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, it wasn't until you mentioned that the original thing aired in the 60s, and I'm like, I guess it would have been more horrific for people then to hear yeah. women scream, question mark, question mm-hmm. mark. Um, yeah. But yeah. I was just, this is not, like, the Vikings aren't invading. Like, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, writers? What the yeah. hell? Yeah. I, I think that there's always a real struggle adapting anything from past to now, because... If you keep too much, then it gets bogged down in, you know, bits like Housewives in Space, which <laughs> you definitely don't want to show today. <laughs> At the same point, hey, we're trying to create this family dynamic, and, uh, you know, how do you how do you create that in space? Yeah. And so, like, I think that you can... It's a very fine line, and we see it all the time with nostalgia, like... Oh, somebody gets changed race or sex and the internet goes nuts. No. I mean, back then they benefited of not having the internet, but like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but still that line. Yeah, it's, it's weird. weird. Like yeah. I think it's it stood out pretty bad too. Yeah, it that stood was the out. worst. It really stood out. It was one of the worst lines of the movie and that's saying quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Also, 
Interesting to know that, that there were the three greys, but never one for uh, Major West. <laughs> yeah, what was <is> that about? <laughs> Obviously, just, there was no they link. Ate him. They <laughs> ate him, and then they just threw the bones aside. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're probably thinking that you know, like the guy's like putting pork. up the grave is definitely going to be Will, and maybe he had no he had no real connection with Smith or sorry with West. Yeah, that's it. Just kicked him down the crevice. <laughs> <laughs> I said, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm not going to eat mom or dad, but Joey, it's on. <laughs> 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 Give it to Joey. He'll eat anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh God! So, but it was. Uh, but I was reading there on the uh, when they were casting the characters right. uh, and so forth. They wanted to bring in the original cast that were still alive at the time, right? And they actually managed for most of it. Uh, but Bill Mummy and Jonathan. Uh, so Bill Mummy played the young Will right. in the original TV series, and Jonathan Harris played uh, Doctor uh, Smith. Smith. Both of them refused, partly because they didn't get what they wanted. Like right. Bill Mummy wanted to basically uh, play the uh, older Will. Right. Right, and the directors, and that thought, ah, this is just going to screw things up and redirect things and put the dire direction the wrong way that they wanted to go. Right. So, they, so Bill said, no, I'm not interested then. And Smith, uh, Jonathan Harris, never played cameos, never believed in cameos. And so he actually wanted to reprise his role as Dr. Smith. Oh, okay. Right? And hence, well, when they went with uh, Gary Oldman, yeah. they, he said, no, I'm not just going to come bit with. Yeah, so, I, I think. They got the robot. The, 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 yes. Yeah, the voice of the robot, robot. sounded very 60s, yeah. FYI. And, and it was basically the same voice yeah. actor. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I understand the not wanting to do cameos yeah. bit. Like, yeah. cameos are so tough because they can either take you completely out of the movie or, yeah. like... You know, a good example of that is the cameos of Ghostbusters, where, it, you know... I haven't watched it. You, well, the, the latest Ghostbusters, where you know, Dan Aykroyd rolls up and says, oh, I don't believe in no ghosts. And you're like, that's a really weird line from a taxi cab. <laughs> the, the only reason it's okay is because we know it's Dan Aykroyd. Aykroyd. It was one of the original exactly. Ghostbusters. But it's so off sync with what is happening in the movie that you're just like... What? Okay. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's the I can still hear the women scream. That yeah, movie. exactly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's just there's just no so, part of it that you're like, oh, okay. It's I'm I'm really yeah. I yeah, think that yeah. it's better that people don't. Yeah. So yeah. So with the I, well, I thought it was kind of neat once I realized who was who, uh, who was playing what, was that uh, the original um, Maureen uh, mm -hmm. Robinson was played by June Lockhart. She played the principal Cartwright in the first little scene about there. That's so perfect. That yeah. conversation between Maureen and Maureen was kind of interesting. Oh, I <laughs> did not know that. Yeah. I love that you look up trivia and do all the research yeah. I'm supposed to, but don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Mark Goddard, who played Major West in the original TV series, was the general that... Uh, Basically, oh. balled out Major West. <laughs> balled out. That was the softest ball on the exactly. face of the planet. Yeah. Mm. I roll. <laughs> exactly. My whole point about why that bo his character bothered me, but anyways. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was interesting. And then, of course, the two uh, two actresses that played uh, Judy and um, mm -hmm. Penny in the original TV series, you didn't even notice them. They they were playing reporters. And so, yeah. Of course, so it was that's just, that's perfect. That's the perfect role exactly. of a cameo where they're not. Yeah. Yeah, but who nobody recognized them. Yeah, which because, is okay because they were actually kids when they were doing yeah. the. Original that film. to me is great that it shows up in trivia of like, hey, yeah. other people came back and came and did yeah. this. Whereas if it were like, we need to ask a question. Da 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 da. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I don't know. This movie just did not sit well with me. Mm. It's, and again, it's not. I'm not angry at it so much. I just. It was it was meh. It was a movie that I watched. Yeah, <laughs> it entertained for two hours. This or morning. kind of <laughs> <laughs> six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I did the it cats too. wouldn't let me sleep, so I watched a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I I wouldn't have watched it again had it not been for this panel. Yeah, I I think yeah. Well, that's exactly it. I think it's got so much potential and promise. Yes, yeah. it's, there there's so much in there that you could work with, yeah. and it failed. The idea of being lost in space is mm -hmm. such a neat premise. Yep. And 
it, it just it was executed so poorly, mm -hmm. and that's that's where I think this movie okay. lets down. Yeah. Except for the moments with Matt LeBlanc, which were awesome. <laughs> well, we'll 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 agree to disagree yeah. on that. Which. <laughs> 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 But yeah, the uh, I, I'm actually kind of interested to see how they put, do this new TV series. I'm really interested because again, the potential is there. Yeah. Like yeah. this, the premise is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I remember growing up, and I used to watch a TV show, and I'm not sure when that TV show was. It was called Swiss Family Robinson. It's yes. the same premise, but they're stranded on an yes, island. Yes, this yeah. is basically the Swiss Family yeah. Robinson in space, right the, down to the original the was based mm -hmm. off of. Just was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I think it was a series of books and stuff before. Yes, that. it was. So, yeah, 1800s. So, and funny enough, I think the books themselves were also based upon the Robinson Crusoe story. Yes. Yeah. Which I is, remember watching a cartoon of the Swiss Family Robinson, and all I remember about it is an ostrich race. Yeah, that's it. Is the boy yeah. can ride an ostrich? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, the other aspect that's kind of interesting for trivia on this was that the movie, this Lost in Space movie, started on thirty. It was the first date was thirtieth of September. 2058. Robinson Crusoe mm -hmm. story started 30th September 1659. Right. It was kind of an interesting. Ah. <laughs> See, I would have. I wish they they made it 59 then. Because then yeah, I, I thought the it same been thing. Way more in sync. I, would, I be, thought the same been, thing. Yeah. Yeah. What a nice Easter egg. Nope, they still, they got even that wrong. wrong. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Whether they were shooting for it or not, who yeah, knows? Yeah, well, Just, like, well, at least they got like two thirds of it. Yeah. What was the original Lost in Space set like? Uh, was it set year two thousand? Uh, uh nineteen ninety seven, actually. Okay, <laughs> that, that's what I'm curious. Is like this oh, Lost in Space you know being what? set for for you know yeah. 2058? But, but the head start would have started filming uh, for in 1997 for 1998 release. Yeah. So, well, like but, you know, yeah. it's one of these things where like 50 years in the future, and here we are in 2018. Do I see us having interdimensional spaceships? Uh, no. No, and science fiction. That that's it. There's <laughs> but you know people thinking like oh. That far in the yeah. future, maybe you would, and then we're catching up to it, and you're like, "Wow, we are not meeting expectations." <laughs> no, <There's... laughs> no. <laughs> I just want to get to the point of Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, not sure flying out cars would be a great idea. I, I think that the only hope for that is drones. Like we <laughs> cannot trust people to fly their own cars. No. People suck in two dimensions, in uh, three dimensions. Right. Like, in three dimensions, then you look at all the fighter pilots you'll end up with. Oh, I, oh I God, think, yeah. and not only that, like, you crash, and then the entire pavement below you is smattered with casualties, because yeah. people will ostensibly still be walking, unless it's like a Wally -E universe where all... <laughs> yeah, that's it, the <laughs> debris all comes down, and it's, it's a really horrible future where everybody just runs between buildings <laughs> like this, and, ah! <laughs> 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 We killed Bill. <laughs> oh, good. There's something there to. <laughs> <There's>, yeah. <laughs> I've got rum if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> That's still up there? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I bring that a couple of years ago? <laughs> yeah, you did. I keep forgetting about it. I'm going to have to remember the Coke. <laughs> uh, Coca Cola, not cocaine. No. <laughs> I was very excited for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have ended that with Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Calorie free cocaine. <laughs> um, so one of the tropes that I hate back to the movie a lot for any genre is evil for evil's sake. And yes. This movie had it in spades. That's yeah. And I'm so done with it. Just <laughs> No, and that's that is it, you know, one of the lines that I, I remember is always, oh, oh, evil knows evil. I know, yeah. right? like, But why? What are you looking <laughs> to accomplish? Like, right, at least have... There's... Okay, so I get that the... Oh, what were they called? I just watched this this morning. The, the... the space spiders? No, the syndicate, the, the human terrorist oh. group. Right. Anyway, human terrorist group wanted to colonize this place before the rest of humanity does. Get that goal, because, I don't know, maybe you think the rest of humanity sucks or something, or they will mismanage it like they did Earth, and everybody's going to die yeah. on that planet as yeah. well. I That's get really that. That's a really good goal for terrorists. We want to go they set were... up our own eco-preserve somewhere. Oh, they were yeah. bio-eco-terrorists yeah, of some like, sort, I think. They were, well, they were terrorists, anyway. Maybe they were also religious terrorists. No. The general I... says something about, they just want to cleanse us Western 
something or other. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't remember that. Yeah. Mm. Anyways. Anyway, yeah, terrorists have weird goals. Yeah, but at least they have goals, right? Yeah. This dude was just like, I'm just going to sabotage this mis- mission for reasons. Um, yeah. No, he sabotaged the mission because he was t- told to, uh, otherwise he wouldn't get his money. Well, yeah, well, but again... You're on the mission. You're, That's yeah. like, yeah, now, hey, yeah. if the Titanic doesn't but, make it across the ocean, you'll get paid a million dollars, but you've <laughs> got to be on the boat. Like, well, he wasn't wait. Supposed to he wasn't supposed to be on, on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of electrocuted into place. Yeah, but uh, interesting enough, that Smith character in the... T- going back to the TV series now, he was always sort of personal... He, he had his own personal ambitions. That yeah. He was always trying to meet. And, yeah, but... But that didn't really come... You're right. It didn't really come across no. in... But also, how quickly... Like, if you get... If you're supposed to sabotage the mission, then you end up on the mission accidentally. Like, how quick do you have to be like, hey, my survival depends on the people I'm with. Yeah. I am not going to re-sabotage this. I'm going to do everything we can to survive and screw the money. <laughs> yeah, well, and also, it... it sort of there's a there's a clash in ideology here because he even says that he will do what is in his best interest to yeah. survive right the planet is dying he knows the planet is dying that's mm. why this mission is going ahead why would you self sabotage your chance of a life because I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. You're sabotaging the thing that will save you, and your whole thing is that you want to save yourself. What? Oil, <laughs> Oil industry. Oil industry. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. I just... Yeah, but the oil industry is predicated on like people not believing what they're seeing. This guy fully, to my mind, believed that the Earth was dying. Yeah. Uh, I mean... After all, he was working for the eco-terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Who but again, saw the same thing. You can be working for any organization you want when you're like, all right, I've got, you know, eight people on a ship and we're lost and things are not going well. Yeah. I'm a smart individual. I'm going to throw my lot in with these people. Trying to continue, like, to sabotage the mission Funny seems like a know. very poor survival strategy. Right? Yeah. There's, and, it, and that's a character, that was a character trait even in the old Smith. Yeah. He kept on trying to sabotage things. It's... But for certain different goals, but still. Yeah, like, I totally get if you're not expecting to survive. But he wanted to survive. Yeah. yeah. That was his whole character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hate poorly written villains. It's good he becomes a spider, and then we can understand why he's evil now. And also gets... Because he has legs. Because <laughs> he has many legs. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> final thoughts and star rating. Uh, Martin, we'll start with you. So, I, I mean... Like I say, is when I watched this movie for the first time, I loved it. I was at a point in my life where I watched the Battle of Endor, the Battle of Yavin, the Battle of Hoth on repeat over and over again. You put a flyboy in space and space bugs and like, uh, which I still watch Starship Troopers because I love all of them. I'm all good with this. Like, if you're 13 year old me, dig in. It's going to be great. If you're anybody else, You've heard everybody else's criticisms, which are totally valid. So if that's going to dissuade you, don't. Uh, this movie is, again, it's a, it's a three-star movie. It's not going to be the worst thing you'll ever see. It won't change your world either. It's acceptable like sci-fi to fill the void in between watching the space battles of better movies. <laughs> Bill? I hate to agree agree with you there, Martin, but I do. It's, a, it's actually a fun movie. You don't have to think through it. Uh, it's good background noise when you're doing other things. Mm-hmm. Uh. I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas me, you might look at the TV for a little bit and then go back to doing whatever mm-hmm. you're doing. That's then that's the type of movie I kind of like sometimes. It's just to mm-hmm. throw it in, and so yeah, I agree. It's not a any higher than about a three star rating yeah. at this point. So two stars for me. <laughs> I'm surprised she gave it two. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Battlefield Earth. No. It's not a good movie. It's not the worst movie in the world. It's just not something I would ever watch again unless mm. I'm on another panel and I have to take more notes. That's <laughs> that's it. All right, who wants to pick the next one? No, I think you pick the I last one. I pick the last one. one. Oh. Yeah, no. Pick, pick something, something good. good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Pacific Rim is an excellent movie. Yay! Monsters vs. Robots. That's 
Mm. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. This. <laughs> it's just monsters versus robots. My teenage self is so thrilled. Okay. <laughs> so the next movie we're going to be reviewing is Pacific Rim, the first one. That's the 2013 uh, uh, film. If you have any thoughts about Lost in Space, the 1998 movie, leave them in the comments below and we can duke it out there. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care. Pacific Rim.